Welcome to the LATAM Startups keynote conversation with Dr. Claudia Akriviak uh, on how to create a post-pandemic economy uh, built on innovation. Hello, Dr. Claudia. Hello, it's great to be here today. Well, I, I need to introduce you because uh, I think uh, people need to understand uh, what you bring to this conversation here. Um, Claudia is the president and CEO at OCI, the Ontario Centre of Innovation, a not-for-profit organization that works with industry, government, and academia to accelerate the commercialization of new technologies. Uh, before joining OCI, uh, Dr. Claudia held the position of Vice President Business Development at MyTax. She serves on the board of directors for IBI Group and Waterloo's Accelerator Center and holds a PhD in chemistry from the University of Toronto. That's why I keep saying Claudia. And I think I have your permission to go with Claudia now. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, so, so let me start you off here. As some of the people listening may be unfamiliar with the Ontario Center of Innovation. What does your organization do? Sure. So we are a not-for-profit organization that's funded by the Ontario government through the Ministry of Job Creation, Economic Development and Trade. And our mandate really is to develop and deliver programs that accelerate the development, the commercialization and the adoption of emerging technologies that drive job creation and prosperity in Ontario. Uh, what, that, what that means is we support Ontario's researchers, entrepreneurs, and innovators to, in, in three ways. First, we support collaborative R&D projects between Ontario's industry and the post-secondary institutions across the province. So Ontario's universities, colleges, and research hospitals. Second, we provide seed financing to, to early stage startups that are commercializing IP, helping move that IP out of the research lab and into, into the marketplace. And then finally, we develop and deploy strategic initiatives and innovation networks in, in key sectors and key technology areas, such as 5G, next generation networks, connected autonomous vehicles, EVs, um, AI, um, et cetera. I would like to say that we work very closely with the Ontario government, and I would like to take this opportunity also to thank the minister um, for the Ministry of Economic Development, Job Creation and, and Trade Minister Vic Fideli for, for his and the Ontario government's support. These programs and initiatives would not have been possible without that support and, and leadership. Well, you know, Claudia, you've mentioned a couple of innovative technologies here, autonomous cars, AI, you've talked about the, the, your, the way that you work with seed funding, academic institutions. So you're the perfect person to ask this, this, this question. Um, what is the state of innovation in this province? So that, 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 is, that is a very, very timely question. Um, if you were asking me this, this question, let's say 12 months ago, what I would probably say is, you know, if we look at um, the Conference Board of Canada, for example, and, and the innovation scorecards and reports that they do. Ontario is a top performing province and, and typically last time I think we scored a B and we're seventh overall in the ranking. Mm -hmm. But something very profound has happened over the last 12 months. Um, the last 12 months, owing to the pandemic, have been incredibly challenging and have taken a tremendous toll on our economy, on our healthcare sector, and on our mental health. But also over the last 12 months, we have seen the tremendous capacity for innovation in this, in this province become unlocked. We've seen entrepreneurs pivot to respond to the challenges of the pandemic. We've seen, for example, companies like Cleanworks, before the pandemic, they had a technology that was used in the um, food and beverage processing sector to, to sanitize produce. In response to the PPE challenges at the beginning of the pandemic, they, they retooled their, 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 their technology to sanitize PPEs. And, and they did that pivot literally overnight. And today they're, they're supplying um, frontline health workers, not only in, in Ontario, but, but across Canada. Um, we've also seen automakers and auto suppliers retool to com combat COVID-19. We've seen the development of game-changing testing technologies emerge um, out of the province's research labs um, and, and, and into, the, into the marketplace. We've seen companies accelerate the digitization of their customer and, and supply chain interactions and their internal operations at unprecedented levels. So we've, we've seen innovation happen 
um, over the last 12 months, despite despite the, the, the challenges. And I, and I would say that what has happened over the last 12 months really demonstrates um, the capacity for innovation in, in, this, in, in, this, in, this, in this province. Now, I'm sure you've spent quite a bit, a bit of time thinking about, about the situation now, but also about what happens after the pandemic. What are some of the things we need to see in Ontario to support uh, a, a, a really good post-pandemic recovery? I would say Ontario and Canada needs innovation to build a bold post-pandemic future. And it's the entrepreneurs that have the ideas that will take our country from, from, from the challenges and, and the lows of the pandemic to, to the, the, the summit of, of, of success. So innovation is really critical to um, economic recovery and, and, and rebuilding. Um, you know, I think that what, what is needed are, are, are really three things. Um, in order to be able to support not only a post-pandemic recovery, but to ensure that we re rebuild better and stronger and mm -hmm. ensure that Ontario and Canada remain globally competitive. Um, first, I think we, we need to build capacity in advanced technologies, access to advanced and emerging technologies like 5G, AI, some of the other things I mentioned earlier, help companies innovate faster and they help companies capitalize on emerging market opportunities. Um, we also need to continue to strengthen and leverage our tech sector. Um, you know, recognizing the central role that the tech sector plays in economic recovery and, 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 and job creation, we have to ensure that the, the innovators and entrepreneurs that are leveraging emerging and advanced technologies to solve um, business challenges have access to first customers and early adopters to, to, mm. to get established and grow. So, so we need to ensure that in, that in Ontario, we're not only developing these, um, these, these technologies, but we're adopting these technologies. Um, we're becoming the first customers of these technologies um, as well. So that will be critical. And then finally, the, the last piece is we need to accelerate the commercialization of IP um, in, in Ontario. Um, the ability to, to commercialize IP will position Ontario as a glo global leader if we can leverage industry demand to, to commercialize these, these technologies as, as solutions to some of the business problems and, 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 and challenges. So to kind of sum up what, what I think is critical, building capacity and advanced technologies, continuing to strengthen and leverage the, the tech sector here, and um, accelerating the commercialization of Made in Ontario. Um, IP and what underlines all three is entrepreneurship and the importance of entrepreneurs, um, specifically in rebuilding um, our, our, our economy and emerging stronger and better and smarter. You know, that's that's so important and a, and a point that I'm going to pick out of there and highlight because I, I felt like my mind also somewhat stopped when you said that too, is the idea of being ready to be first customers. Right, giving giving these these organizations the, that beta that they need, or the or the first proof of concept that they need, and, and and being ready to do that. What is the role you see international startups playing in that recovery? Because you know, as you're talking, I see certain themes emerge here. That 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 you know that we have uh, we have great ideas, great entrepreneurs and startups here, but there's an opportunity here. So can you talk to me about that role? Sure. So I, you know, international startups play a very significant role um, in 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 Ontario's economic um, growth and, and Canada's economic growth, and, and and not only will play but but have played um, as as well. Um, we are a a province, a country of um, of immigrants. Um, I'm an immigrant. I actually came to 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 Canada in the um, in the early '80s. Um, my family having left um, left 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 Poland, um, and I think that when we look at what Ontario, what Canada needs to do to to flourish in the economy um, of, of of the future. Um, Entrepreneurship is really important. Some of the things I talked about, commercialization of IP is really important. 
And we need a critical mass of talent to be able to do that. We need to attract uh, we need to not only de develop the best technologies here, we also need to attract the top talent and the top entrepreneurs um, from across the globe and ensure that they come here and they build and scale their companies, scale their companies here. I think you know one of the, the best ways to demonstrate what, how something like that happens, um, and, and it, it's, 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 the, it's, a, it's the success story of Apply Board. So, um, because I think it really demonstrates the importance of international entrepreneurs, the role international entrepreneurs can play in, in economic development and, and really unlocking um, that, that power. So everyone knows that Apply Board um, back in, in, in May, they, they raised a Series C that was close to 100 million on a $2 billion valuation, making them one of the very few unicorns um, in Canada. And everyone was excited about that. Apply Board is a Waterloo-based um, company. They have a platform that helps students access international education opportunities. But what not many people know is that um, Apply Board was a startup visa recipient. Mm -hmm. So the co-founders, um, 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 uh, Martin, um, um, and uh, Mehdi and, and Massey Basiri um, were Iranian immigrants. They launched the company in, in 20, uh, 2015. Um, they worked very closely with the Accelerator Center in, in, in Waterloo, and they launched the company here as, as a result of the challenges that they endured uh, coming to Canada as international students um, mm -hmm. th themselves. And to date, Applied Board has grown to become the world's largest online platform for international student recruitment. Um, in 2019, they were named Canada's fastest growing tech company um, by Deloitte. To date, they've raised 200, over $240 million in, 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 in funding, and they employ um, over 800 employees um, in, in, in Ontario. That demonstrates why we need international entrepreneurs. That demonstrates um, the, the potential that international entrepreneurs present when they come here, when they start their companies um, here, and the tremendous economic value that that can help unlock. You know, so here you have this 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 great case study that you've presented, uh, Apply Board. Uh, but you know, when you think of a company like that or any other great ideas uh, out there. We all know, we hear this all the time, that there's such a global competition for talent, um, ideas, and research. I, I wonder, what does this province offer uh, international researchers, um, business owners, entrepreneurs who have something that, you know, something great in their hands or, or some great idea in their, in their head? Absolutely. So on your on, on your first point, th there is a global competition for talent, mm -hmm. and it is a fierce competition. But the good news is, global talent is mobile. They they they. We are living in an unprecedented time where entrepreneurs um, can start their companies anywhere. Where where young people are incredibly mobile in terms of where they go to school, uh, where they would like to start their companies, where they want to raise their their. Um, their, their families. And Ontario really does offer entrepre international entrepreneurs, um, I, I think, an, an unprecedented opportunity um, from the perspective that we have an abundance of skilled talent here. We have a robust innovation ecosystem. So in our innovation ecosystem, we have regional innovation centers. We, we have over 20 universities and, and 20 plus colleges. We have a plethora of incubators and, and, and accelerators. And that's important because those are the supports that help companies um, succeed, that help companies like Apply Board um, um, start get them prepared for success from the very, very early stage. Um, the academic institutions provide the talent um, to help those companies grow here. And if you look at the, the industries that we have um, in Ontario, advanced manufacturing, mm -hmm. um, um, AI, digital media, financial services, I mentioned food and, uh, a food and beverage example earlier, life sciences and, 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 and technology, we talked about um, 
um, first customers and early adopters, those industries present um, an excellent opportunity for first customers and, and, and to become first customers and early adopters of, of these solutions and, and innovations that international entrepreneurs um, bring to this, this country and, and, and try to um, grow and, and, and develop in, 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 in this country. Um, geographically, um, Ontario um, is very strategically positioned. It, it provides a really good base to, to grow and scale your company here and export your products to the world. Um, you know, we have our, our, uh, the market across the border in, 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 in the US. We have excellent relationships um, um, with Europe and, and, and other countries um, um, across, across the globe. But I would be remiss if I, if I didn't talk about um, something else which I really think is important. Ontario is a really great place to, 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 to live, to grow your company, to grow your family. Um, I feel as an immigrant myself very privileged to have been able to come to Canada and especially settle in, in, in Ontario. One of the things that, that makes this, this province great is, is actually the, the, the diversity um, that we have. If we look at um, places like Toronto, like um, Ottawa, Waterloo, um, you, you have very vibrant urban centers that have a large concentration of, 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 tech, of tech companies. And, and those companies are very diverse. Um, um, and, and the compositions of those cities are very diverse. If we look at um, um, more broadly across, across, the, across the province, we have a diversity in industries. Um, we have a very strong mining sector in, 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 in Northern Ontario. Um, we have um, a very strong telecom sector in, 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 Eastern, um, in Eastern Ontario. Um, and, and we have phenomenal communities, great places to, um, to live and, and, and to work. And one of the things the pandemic has, has changed um, is, is you know, remote work has now become a reality. So someone who settles anywhere in the province um, can literally work anywhere in the province and could draw talent from anywhere um, across the province. So I think that that presents um, a, a tremendous opportunity um, for, for international um, startups because not only is Ontario a great place to, to start your business, it's a great place to grow and scale your business, but it's also a really great place to live as well. You know what's interesting about that 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 I think sometimes gets forgotten, at least in the mainstream, is that because we have these um, sort of large, uh, diverse communities that that um, some being recent immigrants, you actually have a knowledge base to tap into yes. when you get to the point where you want to grow globally. You have a language base, you have a culture, a base of people who culturally understand things, and and I think you know when you said that, that's what went off for me that because at some point you know no company now thinks of borders when you sell and when you service um ex especially when you're talking about technology you've got to really think global right that's absolutely. your that's your customer base uh, absolutely absolutely and i and i think that you know uh, ontario is really well positioned to grow global companies for 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 for, for the reasons we're we're we're, we're discussing um, right now, there, there's a term um, um, from a few years back called, with respect to startups, called "born global," where where where, where companies from from day one, the old the old notion used to be, well, okay, you know, you start local, mm -hmm. um, and and you get established in in in, in Ontario, and then maybe one day, in terms of um, your the market opportunity, you're ready to go national and then international. Mm -hmm. um, but the reality today is all companies have are and have to be born global from 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 day one. You know, in the in uh, in the to the last answer that, that you gave me, you you named sort of a couple of different areas where um, advanced manufacturing, a couple of other uh, areas in technology where we either have a critical mass, are aiming for a critical mass. Are, I wonder, are there um, areas of interest? That that you see Ontario moving towards or have a have sort of a foothold in. Sure. So I mean, there there are um, sectors and areas of, of 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 strength, and I'll just and I'll just pick pick three. One mm -hmm. is around the entire advanced manufacturing sector, and that's a very very broad 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 sector. But in in, in advanced manufacturing, 
um, whether we're looking at, for example, um, the auto sector and the auto supply and the auto supply chain, or if we're looking more broadly around advanced manufacturing, there, there, there is there is capacity and there's a critical mass of, 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 of companies, um, which again, um, for entrepreneurs that are that are looking at um, opportunities, um, that presents a tremendous a tremendous opportunity. So the advanced manufacturing sector. Um, another sector um, is the life sciences sector. Um, um, and you know, in, in terms of life sciences, um, Ontario really punches well above well above its its weight. Um, we are a global center of, of excellence in, in a number of um, areas related to the life sciences and to the health and to the health sciences. Um, and, and that also presents um, um, opportunities in terms of um, biomanufacturing, for example, um, um, where you see the convergence of the manufacturing and, and, and the life sciences sector, which are really exciting and, and present entrepreneurs with, with, with new and interesting opportunities. And I would say the third area is the tech sector overall, data-driven companies. So looking at, at data-driven companies um, and, and the application um, of their solutions across verticals such as mining, such as the agricultural sector, um, um, such as the financial services sector, um, such as um, the retail sector. You know, one, one of the biggest disruptions owing to the pandemic is, is um, as a result, is, is, is being, um, is what's happening to the retail sector and what we're seeing in terms of acceleration of digitization in the retail sector and e-commerce. But I think that the tech sector presents um, a, a tremendous opportunity, especially for data-driven data -driven companies as well. That's interesting. You know, the picture you paint is, is another thing that we forget that, that Ontario is so vast that I think sometimes people just think of Toronto and, and buildings and, and finance, but really, you know, you've mentioned manufacturing, mining, agriculture. There's so much in terms of sectors that need, uh, that also need innovation, yeah. right? Absolutely. Um, your organization uh, partners with others to welcome international startups to the province. Talk to us about your, your efforts with LATAM startups. So, so we have a great partnership um, with, with, with LATAM. Um, in fact, we are co-located in, 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 the, in the same space. Um, when, when we were in the, physically in the, in, in, in the office, um, we're at um, in downtown Toronto at 325 Front Street and, and LATAM is, um, is, is there. And as well. And what that presents is um, a great opportunity for us to collaborate and, and work together to help the companies that um, and the international entrepreneurs that LATAM um, brings to um, Ontario um, help those companies um, identify partners and, and support them to launch here, to get established here, and, and to grow here. Um, and, and one of the interesting things about the partnership that, that um, OCI has with, with LATAM um, is OCI is a province-wide organization. So, so we have business development managers that are um, situated um, across the province, embedded in, in communities across the, the entire province. So when, when our, we call them BDs, when our BDs work with the companies um, um, that, that LATAM um, brings, brings here, um, we look at two things. One, we look at, okay, what are the support programs that, that we run or our partners run that could help these companies as they're launching? But also, how do we plug them into communities and how do we plug them into the ecosystem across the province um, to, to connect them to first customers, to investors, to early, to, to early adopters? And um, I think a, a good example of that is I, I, I like to tell this, 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 this story is, is a, a company called um, um, Gudelius. So this is a, a company that is a Latin startup company. Um, um, they're originally from Chile and um, they're a tech company in, 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 the, in the mining sector. They, they specialize in developing innovative um, kind of forms of remote interaction for machines, vehicles, robots, processes, all those things that happen um, under um, underground. Um, and so um, when they when they soft landed um, in, in, in in Toronto, they, they were they had a desk and they were based um, at 
um, at 325 Front Street. Um, and when we were speaking to them, we, our, our, the, our BD up north immediately knew that he had to connect them and plug them into what was going on in, um, in, 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 in Sudbury, um, which, which is a focal point for um, the mining industry. Um, in, in, in Ontario. So he, he made, he made the, the, the relevant connections and, and they established a partnership with, North, with an organization called NORCAT um, in Sudbury as a result of that, that in, in introduction. And what, what was really interesting um, is that that led to them starting to, to, to rapidly grow. So, so they were um, incorporated in, in Ontario in May 2020 um, um, and they they started to form 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 partnerships and started operations in Sudbury, um, working together with NORCAT um, at NORCAT's underground test mine. So NORCAT has a has a has a test mine, and you know um, I'm, I'm happy to report that they are now very not only have they established operations, but they're now very close to starting a development project with a very large company in Northern Ontario. So that really demonstrates. Um, um, you know, um, how OCI and LATAM work together, the importance of the work that, that, that LATAM is, is doing in, in terms of supporting um, on entrepreneurs when they, when they come, come here. But also, it also demonstrates a really nice success story because you have a company from Chile mm -hmm. um, that, that soft landed um, in, 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 in Toronto, rapidly set up operations, is now in Northern Ontario, in Sudbury, and is in the process of starting a, 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 a large a development project with a very large mining company in, 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 in Northern, in Northern and, Ontario. And to think that we're just approaching May and they incorporated in like May last year. That's yeah, just bar barely last year. So, I mean, one of the things I think, um, that the pandemic has done is it has accelerated everything. It's accelerated digitization. It's it, it's accelerated, um, you know how companies how companies pivot. But that acceleration, um, what we're seeing happen in Ontario, um, is in part, you know, when it comes to entrepreneurs, is in part possible because the supports that are available for entrepreneurs entrepreneurs here. And so if if you speak to to the company Godelius. You know, um, they they cite the critical support they received from 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 Latam that 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 resulted in in in, in them um, incorporating in, in 2020. Um, the connections that were facilitated by OCI and, and and by others, and the supports that were available along along the way. So it seems incredibly incredibly fast, um, but. A part of that story is the amazing innovation ecosystem and the supports here that are available to entrepreneurs and 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 really the great work that that companies organizations like like LATAM um, and and like others um, across the innovation ecosystem so OCI has a partnership with uh, uh, TBDC as well and, and they have a soft landing program um, that is focused on, on Indian entrepreneurs um, specifically um, but I think that's going back to an earlier question. That's part of the value um, proposition when international entrepreneurs look at a place like Ontario. It is the work that that companies like organizations like LATAM um, do to 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 support them, and also the very important work um, and supports available across the entire innovation ecosystem here. You know what's really interesting about that? That the point that I draw from there is that you know you talked about plugging them into what's happening in Ontario, but it's really very customized plugging in. It's to say, here's where I could see some possible connections because of our understanding that has been, you know, developed over the years and through our networks. And I think, I mean, I don't know, I don't know if you can really put a, a dollar amount on that kind of, you know, that's, that's like walking into a room and someone saying, speak to that person over there, right? Yeah. As opposed to, let me just open the doors to the room. So, I, 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 absolutely. Um, the it, it, it's hard to, to put a value on that, but it is invaluable. It's it's those it's those it's that dot connecting. It's those connections that um, you know. If you get the right connection, it propels your business forward very, very, very rapidly. And how do you plug into those those types of networks um, for international entrepreneurs, especially? That's tough because they come here and they don't have a network. 
Um, their their networks are in their in their in their home countries. So the fact that there are supports, there is an infrastructure here. There are organizations um, across the innovation ecosystem, organizations like LATAM, like OCI, um, um, TBDC, and 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 and, and others um, that will plug those international entrepreneurs into those into those networks and plug them in in a very kind of thoughtful and curated way it's mm -hmm. not like well here's a list of all of the companies in the life sciences sector in ontario or in the mining sector in ontario it's the type of connection like with udelius and um, um our business development manager in the north um kyle who, who basically said okay let me understand what it is that you're doing what your product is what are you what type of connection or contact are you looking for and then making a curated introduction Thank and you, you know what you know you and i both know that that you know when you're talking entrepreneurs like you only have so many cycles if you can yeah. speed up if you could even take something that's a month long or 10 months long and take it down even by 10 percent that's that's you know you're talking about burn rates you're talking about so many things that that, that are better um um dr claudia i could speak to you for a long time but i want to make sure that we have some some time for questions so thank you so much it's been such a pleasure chatting it was it was it was great to 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 speak to you and i look forward to the questions Great. So again, Dr. Dr. Claudia Kriviak, please stay on. She's going to be here uh, for uh, some questions and answers.